Hello, listeners. This is Gary Chahot from the French History Podcast. Katie and Nathan wanted me to warn you that they use strong language in the show, so if that's not your thing, this might not be the show for you. If you do want to listen to a show without swearing but is just as steamy, check out the French History Podcast and learn about the country of art, love, and culture from three million years ago to present. Now, if you'll pardon their French, it's on with the show. Hi, this is Katie. And this is Nathan. And you're listening to Queen's Podcast, the show about badass women in history. So, Uh, let's get this party started, right? What country are we going to today, We're Katie? We're going back to France. Because France wears the pants and they do that funky dance. Go France. Go, go France. France. Isabella of oh, France. France. <laughs> so, Part <clears throat> uh. She was the Queen of England and was the wife of the sketchy King Edward II. And then she was regent to Edward III. But we won't. So we've decided to split Izzy's story up into two parts because she that extra. She got a lot. She got a lot. She's like the OG femme fatale. Like, yeah. Totally. And they called her the she-wolf of France. Um, I don't think during her lifetime. I think that was after her life. But that brings us to what have you made for us to drink today, Nathan? So today we have the wolf cocktail, um, which is <laughs> lime. Like, I got one of those Simply Limeades, mm-hmm. and I scored some jalapenos. And I'm, I'm, scored? Like, not like, yeah. <laughs> That's I, what it makes it I sound like. Have I sex. scored some jalapenos. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, you, like, cut the sides, like, in an X. Is that to, what like, it's called? open it up. Yeah. Oh. To, like, kind of open it up. And then you stick it into the limeade. And you let that sit for like three or four hours, and that it'll infuse the jalapeno into the limeade. So this is not like a fast uh, drink that you could throw together last no, minute. No, however, if prep. you just if you just put those jalapenos in for like a party and then mix some vodka with it, you're done. Yeah. Like you've got a huge punch. Anyway, so it's that mixed with tequila mixed with orange. So I wasn't expecting to like this one but when I saw jalapeno, but it's not like... In your face, jalapeno. In your face. And I'm going to disclaimer that I do have like, so we'll put the pictures on to our the, website. Yeah. But uh, the there are some jalapenos floating in mine. So I'm going to disclaimer and say, if you hear me chewing here in a few minutes. <laughs> Try not uh, to. After that, if I start crying for some reason, you know why now because I'm <laughs> eating a jalapeno. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did not put the jalapeno chunks in mine. Why? I wonder why this one is called the wolf cocktail. I don't know. Do wolves... Ha- eat jalapenos? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Jalapenos are phallic and wolves are... Well, I don't know. I don't even know what that... <laughs> Jalape- okay. Um, <laughs> shout out. I just like a phallus. <laughs> I know you do, honey. I know you do. So shout outs this week. Um, so we started a Patreon page. Go find Queen's Podcast on Patreon if you're so inclined. But we wanted to give... A big thank you to the supporters that we got in our first week of having the Patreon page. So thank you to Angelica, Sarah, Heather, Megan, and Terry. Cheers, bitches. Yes. Clink. Isabella was born sometime in 1295. This was a time that women weren't even in the census. So it was like, eh. Like, I was reading that she could have been... Born in 1295. She could have been born like seven years before that, seven years so, after that. It's like whatever. The general consensus <laughs> is because we know that she was almost definitely 12 when she was married. And we definitely know yes, that day. that was written So down. we definitely, so that's why it's believed to be 1295. And so I read that she was born in the annals of Wigmore. I know that's not how it's said, but I'm going to mispronounce it. The annals, it. I think it's Yes, that. it is the annals. But it's spelled almost like annals. And <laughs> to me, the annals of Wigmore just sounds like the birthplace of the ancient drag queen. Like, <laughs> the, the, the annals of Wigmore. <laughs> Sorry. Work that wig some more, honey. <laughs> Sidetrack. Anyway. Uh, Her dad was the king of France. It was Philip. The fourth. Philip the Fourth, and he was known as Philip the Fair because he, he was, all the ladies had. He for was him. so handsome. Um, but her mom, Joan of Navarre, is pretty impressive too. She was actually the queen of Navarre, like in her own right. Mm-hmm. So since the only queen that we've done previously to be the daughter of two regents 
it was Catherine of Aragon. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's pretty rare. She's the daughter of two rulers in their own right. Yeah, and she was, like, regent at age one. But no, yeah, her mom was, like, born like born into being Queen of Navarre. Her mom was also the Countess of Champagne. God, can that be my name on the weekend? Talk about a drag queen name. <laughs> the Countess of Champagne. <laughs> I love it. Oh, shit. Like we said, Philip was called Philip the Fair, but he, he was, was also... He was tough. Yeah, he was a little bit of a rough guy. Like, I was reading that uh, he was a good overall dad, but he was a little disconnected. He took no shit. Yeah, he was disconnected, wasn't really interested in, like, the day-to-day happenings with their lives. Yeah. Like, ooh, yay, Isabella rode a bike. No, he wouldn't give a fuck. Yeah. Like, he'd just be like, oh, whatever. But he still cared that I they were... I ride a horse every day, so. He would still care that they were progressing on the, you know, yes. like, getting a good education exactly. and all that. He was known to be really stoic. Like, his mm-hmm. advisors and, like, always are like, we don't know what he's thinking. He yeah. kind of kept his own counsel. Uh, what he was really known for is really centralizing France, bringing mm-hmm. into kind of all of the little city state things that we've talked about before that kind of centralizing France. And he was obsessed with money and as power kings are. as kings are and getting land. He's a little frugal with his money. So oh. he wasn't as put together. Everyone said that Isabella favored more her dad yes. than her mom and we know from descriptions that her mom was curvy and blonde and her dad was dark so we have to assume that she was slender brunette. and brunette yeah so she was the six of seven children and and the fourth of four to survive she had three brothers and that survived to adulthood and all three would eventually become king of france and all three would die without legitimate male heirs so this family is kind of like the last successful royal family of this house of of french kings Mm -hmm. yeah and so fun fact uh philip the fourth executed a bunch of the guys that i think a lot of people know the templars yeah the knights templars yeah like he executed he hated the templars and he executed a shitload of them and And one of them was said to like cursed him while he was burning at the stake saying that his, all his sons would die. And it happened. And so, like, yeah, when all his sons Maybe did die so. out, and they were like, oh, don't fuck with the Templars. So she was receiving, like, what we would consider a really good education at the time. And this is, like, 1300s. Yeah, so. women weren't really expected to learn to read unless they were going to go on to become nuns. Get thee to a nunnery. So the fact that it's noted that she had, like, a big book collection as a child. And I, that's what I like little really outstanding. connected with yeah. her. I was like, oh, she's into books. Oh, yeah. Did I ever books. tell you about when I was in kindergarten? So, like, we had this little book library. And you could either read books or, like, go have outside time. And you I chose to So read I read all the books in the library. <laughs> and I was the first kindergartner in, like, our little school to do that in, like, two or three years. So I, I thought, oh, my God. All my peers are going to think I'm so cool. And so, <laughs> like, I got this little ribbon, and I got to go to all the kindergarten classes and be like, Katie I read was the all first. the books. And, like, they were not nearly as impressed <laughs> as I thought they would be. I'm pretty sure it did not help my popularity <laughs> throughout middle school or throughout elementary school. Like, what, what grade were you in kindergarten? Kindergarten. Oh. <laughs> They're all busy picking their noses and coloring. So that's, I mean, I don't think they were exact. It was, the books were like, grapes of wrath or anything it was was like jane jumped jane jumped well you know like but anyways kind of set my um social status throughout the next 12 years (laughs) so so like katie at five years old (laughs) isabella was highly fucking intelligent (laughs) though i bet she was reading more complicated books (laughs) than grapes of wrath (laughs) jane jumped (laughs) jane jumped high um she grew up Living in the Louvre. Bougie. That is the bougiest sentence I've ever said. <laughs> oh, I just grew up yeah. in the Chateau. Oh Louvre. yeah, grew up in the Louvre. Uh, NBD. <laughs> I get the feeling that she was just a really strong-willed, bright young gal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when she's ten, her mom dies. So it's unclear if her mom just died from illness because it was the 1300s and everybody fucking died from illness. Um, It may have been complications with birth because again, 1300s, 
women, women be dying all in birth all the time. Gynecology was not at its best. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> I, I read. So only on Wikipedia could I find that it said, <laughs> which is not a good source. Danger. But it said that, you know, Philip May had killed her and but then like didn't elaborate. And so like I'm I was like trying to check what? every other source. Yeah, like, I read that, too. And I like, never got it anywhere. And else. I'm like, what? You can't just Wikipedia. This is why you suck. You can't just say eh, she may have died from childbirth or Philip may have killed her. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> so I don't I don't think that's reliable. No. But also because he Philip mourned her. Yeah, that's not very openly. That's not very like common for him to do. He's not a very he's a emotional stoic. Yeah, he's, he's disconnected. He's very like a man's um, man, aloof. And um, but he was. So grief stricken when his wife died. They had grown up together, so they had known each other since they were like children. He had to have loved her. I think he he, had to have loved her. Oh, no. Yeah, it's definitely noted that like he loved her very much. So I definitely don't think he killed her. No. I think (laughs) Izzy grew up with that. So she saw saw that. that. She saw that and was like, that's what I expect my husband and my relationship to be like. So the bar was set. Pretty high. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty high. Oh, poor, poor, foreshadowing. <laughs> poor Izzy. So she's nearly past her time, her prime at like age seven. So they're like, we got to get this bitch engaged. Yeah, age seven. I mean, she is getting old and moldy and decrepit. <laughs> Actually, that was too young to like legally be betrothed, as they called it. So the Pope had to step in. And give them a papal dispensation. I'm at a pope. Uh, this is a gross. Uh. This is a gross. Uh, Marry the seven year old. But <laughs> um, France and England had been fighting, so both were eager to make peace, and the Pope really wanted them to make peace too, because the Pope had hope. The Pope had hope. <laughs> <laughs> he was like Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you, my child. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this this marriage would help them put a dispute, I mean, an end to the dispute over Gascony. Yeah, and Gascony's this area of southern France. But England had power over it. So, and this is, I, I have a problem here. It's like, there's an ocean between you guys. How about you so, stay in your corner? Well, because this really <laughs> wasn't that long after the Norman invasion. Mm. And then also... Um, Matilda with, Flanders. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Matilda, like Matilda Flanders. Her. And also, who we haven't talked about yet, Eleanor of Aquitaine had been French and then became the English queen. So she brought a lot of land. Because England and France have married into each other so much. Like, that oh, I own this I land. Still own this own I still own this land. I still own it. Yeah. And so a big problem with... Because, um, you know, France wasn't like one united country like we think of it now. So there was like a lot of duchies, as they called them. The duke or earl of that duchy would then um, pay homage to the French king and pay him taxes. But whenever it's the English king being the duke of Gascony or whatever. Which is in France. He does not want to go pay homage and pay taxes to... The king of France. Exactly. (laughs) So they're fighting over that. And so they're just thinking, look, if our kids get married, that at least chills this dispute for a couple of generations, you know. I mean, it's super complicated, but no king is going to want to bow to another king. Exactly. Moral of the story. Yeah. So when she was 10, they had a marriage by proxy, which we've talked about. And the Catherine de' Medici episode and the Marie Antoinette episode for sure. Maybe other ones. But it's like where you're not actually with each other. Yeah, you're not standing you're not standing there in the chapel with your man. You're you have somebody somebody stands in proxy and but it's just as legally binding. Um, but again, she was only 10, and they had to get a papal disposition from the Pope for her to be married by proxy. Yeah, yeah, because she was too young, because the legal age to get married wasn't until you were 12. So, But they did, eventually, wedding by proxy, and then the wedding, for real, for real, happened January 25th, 1308. In, in Bologna. Yes. <laughs> Which is a uh, northern part of France. Uh, she was 12 and he was 23. Not not as big of an age gap as our last It could have been. It, yeah, it could have been worse. <laughs> she could have been married to a 50-year-old. <laughs> Count your blessings, girl. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Let's, Ugh, let's see how this ends before we say that. <laughs> right. So their wedding was like the who's who of medieval, medieval Europe 
weddings. I mean, there were like a billion other kings and queens there. There seven. were at <laughs> least seven other kings and queens there. And like all the dukes and all the, like just anybody who was anybody was at this wedding. And it lasted for eight crazy nights. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, King Edward the second of England probably didn't pay that much attention to his new bride I mean what does he really have to talk to besides pleasantries to a 12 year old he doesn't really know her either yeah like th- th- their marriage was by proxy yeah so this was like, like the first oh. time they've met and so nobody really thought much of it that he didn't pay too much attention to his bride mm. at the wedding but at their wedding she was noted to be the beauty of beauties in the kingdom if not all Europe she was slender and pale and she wore silk, velvet, and taffeta, which, by the way, trying to sew that shit is yeah, that sounds, not... That does not fun. sound like a walk in the park. <laughs> but she's a royal hoe. So, uh, the dower agreements, like a dowry. The dower <laughs> agreements, which is like, they made this contract, just basically what they get out of the marriage, um, and she was supposed to get all these lands, so she would be... Let's say she's now like the duchess of whatever land in England now when she gets over there. It's because whoever's living there has to pay taxes. So she has money to do to run her own household. It sounds like this whole battle between England and France is just about dowries. I mean, yeah, (laughs) it's it's all about land. That's what they're all always fighting about is land. Mm -hmm. And um, but I think that was really smart of King Philip to secure that that for her. because He's not dumb. He's like. We've been fighting, so I want to have it in writing that she's going to be taken care of when she gets over there. So she's going to have this, this, and this land, so she'll never want for anything. She's always going to have enough money for, like, the essentials. So luckily for Izzy at the time, it wasn't customary to have, like, people watch you. The have, bedding ceremonies. Like, consummate your marriage. Because, well, I'm sorry, that's, that's so fucking weird. I don't I want know. my parents watching me have sex. Like <laughs> It was customary, though it was completely in a husband's right to sleep with his wife if she was 12 if he wanted to um but it was just like customary that you waited until she was fully grown thank (laughs) so i think the uh normal age to consummate a marriage for um a girl would probably be more like 14 to 16 somewhere in there all Which, right, so let's so gross, but yeah, better than twelve. <laughs> yeah, better than twelve. So let's talk about Edward the Second of England. Um, he's our new leading man. He's so handsome. Oh, he's so handsome. I'd like me a piece of that. Mm. His father was a super powerful king, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And by the time that their wedding had taken place, Daddy O had been dead for a year, and he's having problems living up to his dad. His dad was this just commanding figure that took no shit. Um, they called him the Hammer of the Scots because he, um, fucked up Scotland so much, <laughs> as English kings <laughs> like to do. Yeah. Those Scottish lands are mine. But this Eddie, Edward II, he's handsome, he's charismatic, he's super tall. He's he's into, like, giving gifts to the people. Yeah, he's he de- very nice. The only thing, he he doesn't really like being king all that much. What he likes about being king is... Is bestowing gifts upon people that he likes. Making people happy. Making people happy. Um, parties and stuff like that. Could he be a people pleaser to the max? Maybe he so. He doesn't like war. He doesn't like diplomacy. Um, <laughs> one of his favorite hobbies is uh, building houses and digging ditches. Oh, you know, like ye old Habitat for Humanity. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but at the time, it was like, why the fuck is the king digging a ditch with those peasants over right. there? And from the get go, these powerful men in England just don't trust him. They, yeah. He's a young kid. He's a young king. I mean, his How's dad it? was super powerful, and they su- just don't think he's ready. They no. don't think, yeah. So after the wedding, they're like, "All right, you're the queen of England. Well, let's go to England." So they head for England in early February. And Izzy has a couple of her uncles go with her and at least one of her brothers. And, like, a shitload of ladies-in-waiting and stuff like that, I'm sure. Is that what you did? That's what you did. Can you imagine being 12 and, like... Having a posse? Yeah. (laughs) And just being like, all right, so here's your posse. Um, Go live in this strange land now. Maybe never see you again. Bye, Dad. Yeah. Love you. Exactly. (laughs) Um, Something I found odd is how the chroniclers mention all the clothes she brings with her. Oh, yeah. And I guess this is just to solidify that, oh, she real important. 
I can't think any other reason why they would mention her um, 419 yards of linen that she brought with her. Or her 72 headdresses and two crowns of gold. She's from France, so, I mean, they are bougie over there. I know, but it must be... I think the only reason they even mention that is to, like, point out that she is rich and she is super fucking important. Yeah, it's to win over the English people. Yeah. That she's coming over to, you know... Pretty quickly upon arrival, she learns what everyone else already knew... Her husband has a boyfriend. <laughs> now, I think it, it's impossible that they hadn't, I'm sure maybe she hadn't heard the rumors because <laughs> she was so young, but surely her uncles and her brother and stuff or whatever would have heard the rumors about Edward's quote unquote favorite. Yeah. And <laughs> that's what I found so funny is like, okay, Eddie's a man eater. He likes his men's is his. Mm-hmm. And... When that's what they would call them is their favorites. Yeah. So this is not a term that we're only going to say once. No, that was the term. That's just across the board. Spoiler alert. The term that for him is his favorite. And that was known even in the past and throughout history, like before then. Yeah. Kings had had favorites and yeah. that was a homosexual term. Well, no, because even, Sometimes. even in Henry VIII, Anne Boleyn, it's documented that Anne Boleyn was his favorite. So I don't think it's I don't think it's gender one genderized. Oh. I think it's just in general. Fuck this my is gender stereotypes. Yeah, Nathan, if you could please, <laughs> it's 2018. Anybody can be a favorite. No, it's like 1305. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, so they get off the they get off the boat from England or from France, and it like doesn't even dock on English soil before the king is. Off the boat, running into the arms of Piers Gaveston. <laughs> I can just hear the like romantic music yeah, playing in the background. Yeah, yeah. And they're and running towards each other. They said he bestowed many hugs and kisses upon him. Exactly. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm sure Izzy's just like, um, hello, Eddie. Hey, yeah. I'm your fucking wife standing over here, bitch. Like, hello. why are you going to run off to, what are you going to do with this dude? So what? let's talk about Piers Gaveston for a hot second. Um, he was born into like minor French nobility. Like super minor in Gascony, the place that we had been talking about before. So he's like, it's Coinc- weird because it's like, because it's like English, but it's also French or whatever. But, um, then... Piers, I always want to say Piers Morgan. That's not right. <laughs> Piers Gaveston. Let's just call him Gaveston. I want to call him Piers Galveston. I know, I do keep wanting to say Galveston, too. We're from Texas, in case you can't tell. But no, let's just, um, PG. Let's call him PG. PG. <laughs> so, um, PG's dad was, had, like, deflected. Is it deflected or defected? Defected. Defected. I knew it wasn't right as soon as I said it. He de- he defected from France and was like, I want to be on Team England. And Eddie and Gaveston went. So they grew, grew up, up together. together. Yeah. So Eddie won. Eddie's dad, Eddie won, was like, oh, this guy will be a good influence for my son. So I'm going to make sure they're like schooled together or whatever. And then like immediately regretted that decision because from a young <laughs> age, PG was like, Telling Eddie, like, oh, you don't need to go to school. You're going to be king of people. Will do whatever you want. Like, Come let's hang just out go. With me. Yeah, mm, let's go have some lunch on the lake. Eddie didn't do a thing without Gaveston. And there okay. were there were rumors that flying. That I mean, they start were lovers. like from like, from like the time that they were like teenagers. Like PG even got exiled. Eddie one had exiled Gaveston whenever they were like just friends like growing up in school because he was like this guy's a bad influence. I think they became much more than friends later well, on. Well yeah. <laughs> it's just, so like there are still some historians who say that they weren't lovers um, but I feel like it most believe that they were. I think that they were. I think that they were too and the people that are um, denying it are just haters. Even if they weren't lovers Piers Gaveston was such a bad influence and, and on the, him, the just no, as a person. The nobility hated him. Well, because, okay, so um, the king made Piers um, the Duke of Cromwell, mm-hmm. which was supposed to be held for, like, one of his brothers. And something. by the way, he's, like like we said, he's minor French nobility, P- PR, PG is. Sorry, yeah, PR. and whenever, whenever Eddie goes off to marry Izzy, he leaves PG as the regent. And that's fucked up. And not, again, he's got <laughs> brothers. He's got 
people of like cousins who are like dukes of royal blood and stuff who are supposed to get that not this not your boyfriend yeah i really think the king was getting that side d okay so i think the king was definitely getting that side d but i don't think that's what people were mad about like no homosexuality was obviously illegal at this point and frowned upon but there's been gay people since the beginning of forever and so I don't believe for a second he's going to be the first gay king there's ever been. No. But it's just that if you just don't be a dick about it. Right. And he's just <laughs> being a dick about it. Don't fuck it up. For instance, when Edward went to France, he left Gaveston in charge, like we said, and all the old, other nobles are like, what, what the fuck? What the fuck? Dude? It should have been, it should have been number one of us. Like, not, not your boyfriend. Uh. So, so anyway. Let's talk um, about the coronation, because we could, I feel like. Okay, so in our Patreon episode, I'm sure we will talk about Gaveston <laughs> for much longer. <laughs> but anyway. anyway. <laughs> so February 25th, 1308, um, Eddie and Izzy have their coronation. Edward had been king for over a year at this point, but I think he wanted to wait until the French alliance was like solidified to do his coronation, basically to show off like... Hey, guys, look at what I got us. I got us a daughter of France. Yeah, that's a big deal, like, because France and England had been fighting this entire time. Yeah, and she was such, of such, like, amazing royal stock, you know? Yeah, she had strong ties. Yeah, so. So let's set the scene. So let's set the scene of this coronation, because it was lit. February 25th. 1308. <laughs> so um, they walk into the chapel um, with like this train of people behind them. Um, they walk down like this fancy carpet lined with flowers. Eddie wore like these fancy fucking robes, but, but he... barefoot. Barefoot. I think that was to like represent like pilgrimage or something like that. Uh, I think it's a Jesus thing. And I'm all not sure. these all these barons carried canopies above the royal couple, looking royal at AF. And so like. All the dukes and earls and barons and stuff are walking behind them. And, you know, maybe one's carrying, like, a royal scepter. And one's carrying some jewels. And one's carrying... I don't fucking know. But guess the holy hand grenade. But guess who's in the lead P- in this train? G. So, like, they come down the long uh, walkway, lined in flowers and walking barefoot and shit... And there is PG holding the crown, which, oh, Nathan just, like, got it. Did you just get a jalapeno or something? No, I, I, I forgot to put He, the, like, the... stifled a, a scream just <laughs> I now. I had a little bit of jalapeno seed in there, but there was, like, it was just pure tequila. It was just tequila and, and jalapeno. And, and no juice, like... Ooh, Jesus, come to help me, down. Sorry, anyway. <laughs> I don't know what just came out of my mouth. <laughs> That's half of my life. <laughs> your, your southern grandma just came out of your mouth. Okay, okay. Whatever that was. Anyway. So, um, uh, yeah. So, he's carrying the crown of Edward the Confessor, who is the only king of England. I know at this time, I'm not sure still, but he was the only king of England to ever been canonized. That was a big fucking deal. Duh. I mean, like. Pierce Gaveston, who the fuck are you? Like, it would be... <laughs> he's wearing purple while he's, he's doing it. He is wearing purple, y'all. And that was a big deal. The only people allowed in the entire country to wear purple are kings and queens. Well, it's... we. I mean... Like, even dukes and earls. I remember learning about this in, like, elementary school. Yeah. Where it was like, purple was the royal color. And it was And we talked about hard. that in the, um, the, uh, the Theodora episode when she says, purple is the noblest shroud. Yes. Um, it's like... It, it is the, you can't wear it unless you're king, and that's <laughs> and that is the exact reaction of all everybody there is like, is that guy really in purple right now? So not only did they have this dude that's not even related to them walking down the aisle at the beginning wearing purple, and I'm sure Izzy again, like I think at the beginning she was kind of ignorant to how big of a deal this all was, but she knew even at twelve, I'm sure she knew, oh. That guy is not supposed to be wearing. She must be like, oh, how embarrassing for him. He is not supposed to be wearing. And I'm sure while she's at the wedding, people are like scoffing because you mean the coronation. Yeah, at the coronation. Excuse me, at the coronation, they're like scoffing at her. Like, and it's not negative towards her. It's just what's 
happening with this. Yeah, people like, were pissed. People to say people were pissed. Was, That's an understatement. <laughs> um, this one guy, this one chronicler, wrote down that Gaveston was so decked out he more resembled the god Mars than a mortal. I mean, this was a, Burn. a fucking shit show. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk about the shit show. So after the coronation, they had a feast. And um, so I don't think, or is the coronation is public to everybody. Mm-hmm. The feast, I believe, was like an invite-only situation. Who was in charge of putting together the feast? Oh, uh, P.G. Pierce Gaveston. So um, the food came like three hours. Like people had been sitting there for three hours before the food came out. And then when it came out, it was either undercooked. So it was like, you know, raw chicken or like burnt to a crisp. But people had been sitting there drinking wine for three hours at this point. So everybody's drunk. Um, and they're getting rowdy. They're having a good time. So, I mean, I guess. Well, they're, they're getting, getting rowdy and they're talking shit louder than they <laughs> should be talking. No, the biggest slap in the face is like the two biggest slaps in the face are one, you walk in, Edward had had these tapestries made for the occasion with his coat of arms next to Piers's coat of arms. I mean, Not his coat of arms next to Izzy's. I don't like Francis. <laughs> and I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure when Izzy walked in and noticed that, she was like... Oh, hell no. She, I, I mean, even at 12, I you would, would have be to hurt. be like... I would just be hurt. Oh, yeah, I'm sure she was very hurt. And then also, so at their wedding as a gift, Philip of France gave the king all these jewels from France with the assumption that they would then be given to Izzy to wear. Yeah. Like, oh, when she has a son, give her one of these jewels from her homeland or whatever. Gaveston is at this banquet wearing all of Izzy's jewels from her dad. And then... And with his with his symbols all over the wall. What the fuck? And then Eddie sits next to Gaveston and doesn't say a word to Izzy. The whole night. Like, what the hell, dude? And you know, again, like, what does he have to talk to a 12-year-old about? But at least be cordial to her. I mean, you're... But he's like... Her husband. He's like... <laughs> him, and, him and PG just basically seclude themselves and are just, like, only talking to each other. For the entire night. Yeah, they they took it from PG to PG-13 to PG-18. So clever, Nathan. (laughs) But no, so her uncles who came just for the coronation and were leaving after the coronation were so fucking offended. Yeah, and they go back to France and like, hey, yo, Philip. He gave <laughs> he gave the French jewels to this guy. This guy is getting Strike all one. the attention that Strike your daughter <laughs> should be getting. This is not okay. Right. You're so, out. Let's take a breather. As queen, I mean, she's only 12. She has to know something's not right. I mean, she had you a know? lifetime of seeing her dad being this perfect super ruler powerful of king and-, and she just assumes I'm going to be married to somebody like my dad. And um, that didn't happen. That <laughs> has not happened. She writes to her dad as like, so, um... Oh, and her dad... And she... After the coronation, the lands that were supposed to go to Izzy for her dower lands, guess who they went to? PG. Ugh! Bitch. And so she writes to her dad and is like, so... Eddie gave my land to his, like, new boy toy. I don't know what's going on And dad here. was... Pissed. Because, I mean, he was being called the the king's favorite. So that was also adding to Philip Light being like, what the fuck is going on? What the on? fuck is going on? <laughs> so, he was pissed. Well, uh, you know, Izzy couldn't pay for her households. Back then it was like, you know, you had these ladies in waitings, but they're like <coughs> daughters of dukes and stuff. They don't do it for free. You know, you have to pay them. And so she couldn't pay her ladies in waiting. She couldn't pay her chef. She couldn't mm-hmm. pay because she didn't have these lands she was supposed to have. So she's writing to her dad being like, hey, dad, I know you wanted me to come over here and represent France, but um, I'm poor. <laughs> and, right. he's like, and he's like, my daughter is poor. Excuse the fuck out of me. Um, she married the king of England. I she should not be poor. I think so. <laughs> I mean, having to ask your dad for money for your ladies in waiting. Yes. <laughs> that is so embarrassing. And so this is breaking the contract that Philip spent 
ages crafting just to make sure his daughter would yeah, be taken he was care trying of. To, trying to build that alliance between France and England, and now this Eddie number two is coming and effing it all up. <laughs> well, Philip is not Eddie's only problem. He's got 99 problems, and the Barons are the other 98 of them. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, like, none of the nobles or lords trust Eddie. Zero, zilch, not at all. Um, and, and a big part of this is Obviously, they don't like Gaveston. This random dude is coming up yeah. and taking up power, and what the hell is going on? Izzy, though young, felt very disrespected, and her new subjects, i.e. the Lords of England, are picking up on that. And they're like, why do why you want to piss off France? What are you doing? She's such a catch for our country. Yeah, like, stop it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and so the Lords are like, look, Gaveston has to go. But they couldn't outright say the king was useless at his job. So they were like, I think Gaveston was a bit of a scapegoat here. What do you think? I, I think so, too. I, don't... I mean, I don't think, I think he sucked. And I think he was definitely abusing the king's affection for him. And I don't think that Izzy ever really hated Gaveston. I think that it was more of a, I'll tolerate this dude as long as he's around, but he's all right but i need to i need my i need my dues yeah yeah and so i i don't know like yeah. I, I don't want to foreshadow too much but yeah gaviston was the least of her she words. wouldn't have i don't know she wouldn't have been sad to see him go though no, but she um <laughs> yeah so finally edward is just like look i want to appease my lords Fine, and Let's it was send him into exile. Well, it wasn't quite <laughs> exile. It was he's going to go be the lieutenant of Ireland, but still, it's Ireland. He's it, far. It, he's further it's away. Exile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and like it's just I, a nice way of putting him in exile. Exactly, and so um, Gaveston goes 15, off to Ireland. Now, right? she's so 15. she's around fifteen, but like she's not like the maturity levels we were when we were fifteen. She's. She's considered an adult at this time, you know? And so now with Gaveston in quote-unquote exile, he wasn't in exile, but quote-unquote... She gets her jewels back. Hello! She gets her lands. Thanks, bitch. Daddy backs off husband. Nice. The two of them actually start having... I don't think they had embarked on a sexual relationship yet, but they actually start having some affection between each other. He would ask her to come sit in on some, like, council meetings from time to time. Oh, thanks. Finally. (laughs) Yeah, and he would bring her to state, you know, state events where he used to bring Gaveston. That's what people wanted. They wanted to see her out and about on his arm, and I think it made all the lords kind of... (sighs) <sighs> Take a know. sigh of relief, you and know? It just sounds like it's happily ever after, except that she- Gaveston comes back. <laughs> so he's gone for like a year and some change or something. Then Eddie, like, writes to the Pope. And, and he's like, please, let my husband back. back. Please, wait, my boy, boy back. back. And the Pope was like, uh, give me some money. It's cool, you know? This like- is totally a slap in the face with Izzy. No, sh- yeah, so she's not like thrilled about it <laughs> i mean i wouldn't be either <laughs> but <laughs> she accepts it like yeah. you know what she's like this is not i'm not the first queen to be married to a king that has a mistress this mistress just happens to be a man <laughs> right <laughs> and they kind the three of them just kind of live in harmony for a while it's like a polyamorous relationship yes um so, Gaveston, Gav- when he comes back he's pissed though and he starts giving all the lords like these weird nicknames so the first one is the earl of lancaster and, and- he's the main guy he's the main bad guy or and- not bad guy he's the main foe and his name is the black dog the black dog isn't there a led zeppelin song called black dog <laughs> I think you're right. Hey, hey, mama, say the way. That's my that's my uh, Robert Plant <laughs> impression, by the way. That was quite good. Uh, which I'm Black Dog? Do... Black Dog is a cool name. Yeah, I'm gonna do the rest of this episode in Robert Plant. Oh, um, no. Let's don't. see. <laughs> the second one's name was the Earl of Pembroke, uh-huh. and he called him Joseph. I don't want to say it. Joseph I know. I decided Jew. not to do the Robert Plant voice for that nickname. <laughs> yeah. Just Joseph the Jew. So, like, I was trying to figure out why he called them that. And, like, the best I could find out, this is so or horrible, the Earl of Pembroke had a big nose. 
Racist. I know. That's the only reason I could find that he called them that. And that's so disrespectful. Mm, Jesus. Right. And then the Earl of Lincoln was called Mr. Buster Belly. Mr. Buster Belly, <laughs> which I, you know, that's what I call myself every time after I eat um, Mexican food. <laughs> Mr. Like, Buster Belly. I'm like rolling out of Chewy's being like, all right, Mr. Buster Belly, let's get home and get my PJs on. <laughs> Make sure they have elastic waistbands. I know. If you live in a city or if you live in a state that doesn't have Chewies, I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with Isabella of France. It's just, I'm sorry for you. PG has tested his fucking luck with this shit. Like, that the time to play is over. So the lords are so sure that Eddie just can't do shit for himself. I mean, so So, anyway. so you remember how he had 98 problems? And the nobles were all well, of those. Well, now he's got 41, <laughs> and those are the ordinances of 1311. Yes. That is, the lords come together, and they're like, Eddie can't do shit for himself. Um, and they present him with this document called the 41 Ordin- Ordinances, and the lords call themselves the Ordainers. And this th- is huge. This, this is, is huge. Huge. And it's led by that guy, the Earl of Lancaster. Um so, I mean, we've never mentioned this before in a podcast episode yet, but about 200 years prior, if you're a history buff or even not a buff, you've heard of the Magna Carta. Yes. So this is like, it's a huge failure for a king to have the people come to you and be like, We're, you suck so bad at your job. We're limiting your powers. And the last time this happened was about 200 years before with the Magna Carta. Carter? Carta. <laughs> Didn't Jay Z have like an album called The Magna Carta or something? Oh, this isn't I think his you're li- right. I don't know. I'll edit that out if I'm wrong, but I'll leave it in. If- the Magna Carta. <laughs> um, with his 99 problems. But- <laughs> 98. Yes. And uh, Izzy was one. Izzy she yeah. was 99. <laughs> um, so this was a big backlash. Like, part of it was Gaveston because he brought him back and he was like not fulfilling his responsibilities. This was also due, we haven't spoke too too much we mentioned his dad was called the hammer of the scots which was because he just start, he just took over so much of scotland and was just fucking fuck you scotland yeah and eddie really wanted to follow in his daddy's footsteps he had a hard on for conquering scotland you know i think every english king ever had a hard on for conquering scotland <laughs> but yeah so he was like I'm going to go make Daddy proud, and I'm going to go start a war with Scotland. It went miserably. They (laughs) were absolutely, it was just a joke. Like, the Scottish didn't even take it seriously. But what's fucked up is he took Izzy with him, and she's like 15 at this time, and she almost gets taken hostage. Yeah, oh my god, dude. Don't bring your teenage queen to a bunch of skirt-wearing Scots who are going to, (laughs) like, try to, like... Like she, Rape and pillage her. Like, she no, run. barely <laughs> escapes getting taken hostage. And yeah, so with I, that I, and the I, Gaveston I, shit, the lords were like, you don't got this Yeah, guy. I read that if it wasn't for, like, a few of her, like, escorts that, like, yeah. sacrificed their lives, she, she would be dead. Yeah. And we would be or they would, her. Or they would have her hostage and they would get to get ransom from both France and England. You know? Screwed. Yeah. So, yeah. So the ordinances came and they were like... You have to sign this. And so there was 41 of them all together. And they touched on all kinds of things. Like, um, the king is allowed to grant this land to these people. The king is not allowed to grant land to these people. The king is not allowed to um, sentence someone without... It was basically like a checks and balances system, which wasn't normal back then. And Eddie had to sign off on this because if he didn't, there would be a civil war revolt. There would be civil <laughs> war. So like, um, this pissed Eddie off, but he had to go with it. One sad note is that um, in it, they exiled peers and they exiled everybody he was related to. Mm. And one of Izzy's like, ladies in waiting like one of her very most trusted ladies was one of Piers's like third cousins or something so could she it? had so she had to be exiled too she could have been one of our future episodes i know had she had more power but now she gone here she gone back to gascony um <laughs> so what do you think izzy's thinking of her husband um okay so at this point 
I, I think she knows that it's not necessarily... She's just like, who is this pushover guy? Yeah. This guy isn't a king. I think she knows it's not a traditional marriage. I mean, even well, not in even... modern day sense. So she knows it's not a traditional marriage, but what do you think she thinks of the man? I think she thinks, who is this fucking pushover I've been married to? You're supposed to be the king of goddamn England, and you're letting your lords push you around. You're, um, you're sacrificing your people's respect for a boy toy. And again, I don't think it's a gay thing. I think she'd be saying the same thing if he was sacrificing his people's respect for a girlfriend. You know, it just shows like a weak-willed... Somebody that doesn't take their responsibility as fucking king, seriously. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> fucking king. Fucking king. He's the fucking king. Fucking king. <laughs> So what do you think she thinks of him as, like, a person? Not necessarily their relationship, but, like... As a person, I think... I, yeah, I do have to agree that maybe he is a pushover. Mm-hmm. I think she recognizes that, yes, he has all this power, but he's wasting it. Yeah. And I think that's where she's coming from, is, like, why are you wasting your power as a king and wasting it on this dude that's not even a legitimate, like, claim to he the He doesn't throne. have royal blood. He doesn't have any royal yeah, blood in him. Yeah, he has no claim to the throne. And now he's coming in trying to take away my power. That's a little weird. Yeah. It's not the traditional royal family. Yeah. That this, especially 1300s. Yeah. Like, <laughs> England and France. Luckily, so, Piers is gone, and Izzy gets... Pregnant. Babies. So Everybody pre- gets a baby. You get a baby and you yeah. get a baby. Everybody uh, gets a I Prince of I, Wales. I, okay, if you gave me a Prince of Wales, I'd be happy. But if you're trying to give me a you baby. You just give me a baby. I don't know about that. <laughs> you get a baby. Oh, no, thank you. I'm not ready for that. Um, but no. But Izzy was. She was. Yeah, she definitely was. She would have been 16 at this point. That's so, what their job was so, at that time. No, that was her main objective as queen make heirs for england hashtag babies hashtag babies so she announces that she's a with child as they say at the time um and this is amazing news they are through the roof excited eddie's excited philip of france is excited izzy's excited this is just going to bring everybody together and make everything better eddie feels invincible at this point and guess who he invites back to court oh dude bruh dude bruh pg pierce no man what are you fucking thinking he'd only been gone for two months pierce my gaviston oh (laughs) get out so basically pierce shows back up and civil war breaks out oh that's that's uh, like for real, mm-hmm. this Lancaster guy I mean, is like raising forces against his own. Can you not bring... just wait until the baby? Yeah, born? can you just wait I a moment know. and chill the fuck out before so, you bring your boy toy in? Izzy, she's like not thrilled that Gaveston is back, but she has decided she is standing by her man, no matter what decision he makes. Like stand by your man. <laughs> Even though he almost gets you kidnapped in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was beautiful. I know. She was sick and tired of these lords treating her husband. I think that's what it was. She was like, just like... Like an idiot. She was just like, you know what? He's king, so you guys can't tell him what to do. I don't want him sleeping with this guy either, but that's none of your business. <laughs> I mean, she grew up with a king being the boss of the yeah. country. So... And so I think that's where she comes from, is that that's what she yeah. thought everyone should do. Be like, if the king is the leader of the country, so if he wants to sleep with a boy toy, I guess that's fine. I don't want it, but... Exactly. He's She's the king. just fed up. She's just fed up with people telling them what to do as the royal family. So guess what? The king goes on king the run. King on the run. <laughs> I'm just in a musical mood today. Oh, my God. Um, so, Jazz hands. Yeah, so she's just ex- accepted the three-way arrangement again. Um, but she wouldn't be the first queen to... I mean, yeah. we, we can't call it a mistress. Uh, a mister. mister. <laughs> so she the, wouldn't be the first one to accept a mistress slash mister. Yeah. Um, gender inclusive. So she's like, whatever. I'm going to support my hovi- hu- husband. Husband? Oh, my God. I've my husband. So much to, to kill you. To um. kill you. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. They're on the run. Um, remember, she's pregnant. So she's in her first trimester. And... Ed- Edward basically, like, brings her to this nunnery and is like, I really need you to stay here for safekeeping. And she was not, not cool with it. Not about it. Firstly, um, the nunnery she was left off, 
left at is like in northern England. So she's like having flashbacks of almost getting kidnapped in um, Scotland. Hey, remember what happened the last time I was here? Secondly, <laughs> she's like, look, you're trying to raise troops. I'm so much more popular than you. Which, I should be by your side. That's pretty fucking smart because yeah, people in the Lord respected her. Um, but I also understand where he was coming from. Like, yeah, but if you get, you know, if you come on. <coughs> campaign with me to raise forces it might be stressful you might have a miscarriage it was the 1300s people had miscarriages for sneezing you know like (laughs) i I get where he's coming from i get where she's coming from so one day um eddie leaves pierce with the earl of pembroke and i think it was for the same reasoning he was like i'm gonna leave you with this guy because if you go traveling with me like you might get kidnapped or something like that." he wanted to keep them safe yeah and the earl of pembroke one day it's like he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna watch your guy. But then one day he was like, I want to go see my wife. She's in a couple cas- castles over. You cool to hang out by yourself for a couple of days? And Pierce like, cool, was like, cool, yeah, cool, 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 cool. yeah. And then these guys that we have talked about before, yeah, the Lancasters come yeah. in and swoop in and take. So Gavistar. Lancaster didn't do it himself. He hired um, the Earl of Warwick's people to yeah. do it. Wardick. Yeah, not the same because this no, is a I few, know. but family. Yeah, family. <laughs> I actually um, they brought him back to Warwick Castle, which I've been to. I don't know if I mentioned that in the um, Elizabeth Woodville episode. Where- Hashtag bougie. Warwick Castle is so cool. If any of you guys are planning to go to England soon, you should go to Warwick Castle. It was really cool. Anyway. um, Oh, and it's haunted, too. I did the haunted tour. And I had this my little ghost tracker app, and I walked around with it, and the ghost talked to me, and it was was an experience. I also was put on trial for witchcraft. (laughs) Well, speaking of being put on trial, (laughs) I guess it was put on trial. Uh, Gaveston. <laughs> but, like, let's use the term trial very loosely. Like, not my witchcraft her trial, yeah. Piers Gaveston trial. <laughs> yeah. Because it wasn't so, like, it was like a day. Like, they were like, there was no evidence. There was no, he didn't get to defend himself. But he was found guilty of all this shit. They were like, they were just like, how do you plead? And he opened his mouth and everybody was like, guilty as fuck. Who cares? <laughs> and so they they bring Gaveston out to like this hill in the town. This is horrible. Like they didn't even do it in the walls of the castle. Like they you didn't even execute like the most common commoners like this. Mm-hmm. He was brought out to a hill in the town, stabbed in the heart. His head was cut off. It took them like a minute to cut the head off. Like it wasn't like a whoosh Ooh. one and done. It was like hack Hack, hack. <laughs> and then his body was just left there for a couple of days. Oh, just as you do. You know, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> Edward was devastated and obviously fucking furious. I mean, why wouldn't you be? If oh you my God. My well, boy no, I'll like, so since the time of William the Conqueror and this time, which is um, what, like three. 200 years and some change or whatever. No, 300 years. Yeah, I can count. Um, (laughs) 200 years and some change, let's say that. Um, Tequila's good. And, but like since the time of the Conqueror, this, you didn't execute someone of nobility. You just didn't do it. It would start a fight. You just didn't do it. It would start a fight with the rich bitches. So to execute this guy, whether they liked it or not, he was of noble. He was like of the nobility. And to have him executed, one, in public like that, and two, just left there, and three, without the king's knowledge... Now we got bad blood. <laughs> I'm sorry that I started singing when you took a drink. Nathan almost, Nathan almost sent tequila out his nose. Oh, that would have been horrible. But Izzy is goddamn smart. And she tells him don't lash to not, out. yeah, don't, don't lash out at these guys. Chill the hell out. Yeah. Get used to them. Comply with them. Don't I mean, extract she, revenge. I know you want to, but like revenge is a dish served cold. Isn't that the saying? Yes. Yes. And so, <laughs> and so that's what she told him, but probably in French. <laughs> <laughs> so she has her father write to him, and she's like, hey, um, get Eddie to say that we should probably make some peace. And so Eddie signs an agreement saying, it's cool. 
It's cool, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Oh. Yeah, so... <laughs> no, but he's, like, he's forgiving. He, like, signs a thing of, a, like, treaty of peace with his barons, and he forgives them for killing Gaveston, and is like, okay, everything can be groovy now, it's fine, while he, like, in the back of his head figures out his revenge. But there's some good news. Izzy has a baby boy. A healthy baby boy. And it's a misogyny baby boy. Why can't she have a baby girl? Whatever. But what a, it, you know what? She has a healthy baby. child baby. and she didn't die. And so for <laughs> That's 13, huge. 12, that is a fucking miracle. <laughs> the baby was healthy. She was healthy. Everything went fine. Yay, Izzy. Edward is so happy. I read this one thing that I thought was kind of cute. He grants, so like um, the steward of one of Izzy's castles and his wife like were there when the baby was born. And so he grants them 80 pounds a year for the rest of their life, which in like modern money would be like $20,000 for the rest of your life. Like (laughs) just for like being there and making sure she was okay or whatever. And that's how happy he was. And one guy wrote that Edward had been king for six years and this is the first thing he'd done right. Ouch. Ouch. Bit slam. But I really think, so they have this baby boy and they name him Edward because no one is creative. Uh, No, no, you're either. Though I did read one thing that like he was not named after his father. He was named after his grandfather. Oh, how shady, lady. But like, what, but it's still the same fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> so Edward agrees to sign a tree speedy with his barons to be like, hey, yo, we're good. Yep. We're, all is forgiven. Yep. Um. So the birth of the prince seems to kind of like bring calm to England for a time. You know what I mean? Like, no one's fighting. Everyone's and celebrating. Isabel, like, becomes one of his... Top advisors. Yeah, like, no. And that had not happened before. I mean, PG, she was being, PG was ahead of she her. She was being in, like included in everything after that. And, yeah, it. she starts acting as a go-between with um, Edward, who's still a little too angry to meet face-to-face with some of his barons. So she'd, like, act as a go-between and just everybody loves her and I mean, it's just why? how couldn't you just walking on sunshine <laughs> whoa <laughs> so uh, they go to her homeland yeah this is great like there's um I, I can't remember why they go in 1313 to france but um Maybe it's a wedding or something. They go for some kind of state event. And this is the first time she's been home since she moved. And she's so happy to see everybody. And it's actually noted that they seemed so in love during this time period. And just like everything else in Izzy's life, there has to be something that spoils it. There was a fire one day yeah, in her tent. And... Eddie, like, ran in to save her. Yeah. And I read that, like, he was, like, pulling her out, and she's butt-ass naked. Yeah. Just, like, pulling she, her out, being but, like, I'll save my queen. But, yeah, he saved her, and she actually had a scar on her arm for the rest of her life from that. She got burned. She got burnt up. Well, scars are beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, oh, and there was another thing, one other note from this trip is um, Eddie missed a meeting with Philip. Because he wanted to stay in bed with Izzy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Izzy is probably like, oh my God, I finally have that love that I'm I've finally wanted. finally getting what I've wanted out of this relationship. Um, but then, so we're going to talk about a scandal real quick before we <laughs> wrap up this episode. Um, we're going to like kind of breeze through the scandal. But if you are one of our listeners on Patreon, we're going to dig into the scandal a little further so basically there's just three of these bros that are all married to these chicks from burgundy so it's izzy's three brothers and they're married to yeah they're all they're married to like all all of them have wives from burgundy so um her three brothers are married to these three these two sisters and one cousin from burgundy um, I think it's Joan, Margaret, and Blanche of Burgundy. So, long story short, she gives all these purses to the her future, sisters in law. Yeah, the future sister in law. Like, she's like, here are these little gifts. Purses. Yeah, she's at a dinner one night, and it's she like, sees what the fuck, and she sees these two knights carrying these purses, and it's not like 
these purses could be got at Forever 21 or something. Like, no, bitch, I gave you those purses. Like, these are one of a kind. And she was like, huh, why do these... How'd n- you get that? Why do these knights... And, like, also, you're thinking, like, shoulder bag. These, like, purses are, like, something you'd put on your belt. Yeah. So, like, they're carrying these little belt, like, you know, coin purses or whatever. And um, Fanny packs. Fanny packs, <laughs> yes. They are ye old fanny packs. And so... um, Izzy just kind of, like, nonchalantly mentions to her dad, like... Hey, I saw this fanny pack on this hoe, and what's like, going on? I don't, I don't mean to start no shit. Don't start <laughs> no shit. There won't be no shit. But maybe we need to look into that. And so, whenever these three women from Burgundy had married these um, three sons of the King of France, he had given the women from Burgundy this tower called um, the Tower of Nestle. I think that's how you say it. Toy de Nestle. Um, Nels. Nels? It looks like Nestle because it looks like... N-E-L-S-E. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, anyway, they the king's like, cool, cool, cool. I'm going to start investigating this. And long story short, all three of the Burgundy bitches were put under arrest, and so were those two Knight brothers. Um one of the sisters, Joan, was, like, eventually released, but no one else got out of this alive. Nope. Mm-mm. Bye, Felicia. The two knights were brutally executed. Like, they had their genitals cut off while they were still alive in public. Castrated. Because they, um, they weren't of noble blood, so they could be executed in public. So they, yeah, had their... They were dejunked, and the other two women were in prison for the rest of their lives. And die, one of them died, kind of under murky circumstances. And mm-hmm. so the reason to bring this up is because up until this point in history, Isabella is viewed as um, kind of like a dormant personality, mm-hmm. like oh poor girl, this keeps happening to her, but she still like went through it. This is kind of the turning point where she starts being viewed as um, the bitch, basically, which isn't fair to her. No. <laughs> but, like, um, histori- some historians say the whole reason she even did this is because, oh, now I have a son now. And if I illegitimize all my brother's children, my son I can be king. Power. Yes. And so that's where, in history's eyes, she turns from dormant queen to she wolf. I mean, as much as I want her to be this like ruthless bitch, at that point, I think she was being genuine in the way that she was oh, yeah. responding. Like, I think that she was like, "Yo, I gave these purses." Oh no, to these really... I don't think for a second that I think it was legitimately but like. What I'm saying is, is I think that people saw her saying something and then blew it up and made if you it see into something, this say something. big deal yeah. and then we're like oh now she's trying to get power exactly no, she wasn't trying to get power she if was it, just trying to say something yeah she was just trying to be trying like to look out I, for her brothers i gave my brother's future wives these purses and now these little skank ass hoes who are not my sisters yeah <laughs> are sister-in-laws are now walking around with these fucking purses Hell no. Mm-mm. Like, I mean, I don't mm. think it was a power grab. I no, really don't think I really it was don't. a power grab. But, but, but power just hungry. to wrap up, because this is like us wrapping up this episode, <laughs> <laughs> if you can believe it or We're not. We're in love with Izzy. <laughs> um, that is kind of the turning point in history for her. So if you want to hear more about um, that affair and a couple other things, um, the Patreon episode should be going up soon. But... um. So that is Izzy Part 1. Izzy Port Port 2? <laughs> Izzy Katie Tequila. Put the. <laughs> Isabella Put the. This tequila's hit you pretty hard, girl. <laughs> girl, you don't know my life. So, <laughs> Isabella Part 2 coming up next. And, um, you know, I think the rest of her life is going to be super happy. What do you think, Nathan? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you're right, Kate. So, cheers to Izzy's first half of her life. Cheers. So, thanks for listening. If there's something you want to hear, just, like, hit us up. You can email us at queenshistorypodcast at gmail.com. Find us on Twitter. We're at queens underscore podcast. We're on SoundCloud and Stitcher. And follow us on iTunes at Queen's Podcast. All one word. All smushed up. Queen's Podcast. 
Um, follow us on Facebook. Our intro music is by K Sparks featuring Beyond Belief. Thanks for letting us use your song, guys. Thanks, guys, for listening. Cheers. Bye, girl. Clink, clink. <laughs>